This is the IC Pixels podcast with David and Anthony Cavins. We're going to talk about design in everyday situations. Welcome back to the IC Pixels podcast. This is David. This is Anthony. And this is our second episode in the month of February. Um, so in this episode, we wanted to talk about graphic design and social justice. Um, this uh, The idea for this came to me, well, I guess we talked about me and Anthony, my co-host who happens to be here. Uh, we talked about this a while back. Um, mm-hmm. just in passing, but um, I don't know for whatever reason I decided we would we de- decided we'd talk about it again for this episode, um, because I guess we spent we, we noticed more about it and we have more to say because when we originally thought about talking about it it was like well we don't really have anything to say about that but <laughs> after <laughs> basically basically we needed to do some research <laughs> yeah no one has time for that so traditionally we don't do research but we're like okay we need to do research before we can actually talk about that so yeah <laughs> so we did some research and now we have something to talk about yeah <laughs> so i guess we can start by talking about some of the history behind um like the whole social justice thing and how graphic design has been involved in it. Um, when I started Googling and doing some research on the topic, um, you can find like lots of propaganda posters and things like that from like, mm-hmm. well, even well, the old, older stuff I found is obviously, you know, like anti-slavery posters and stuff like that. I'm sure there's stuff like from England, uh, or Europe and all that type of stuff. That's even older. I didn't see much of that. But you can see a lot of posters, you know, where people were fighting for, you know, ending slavery, fighting to maintain slavery, um, promoting Nazis, uh, the whole Nazi thing or going against the Nazi thing and all those types of things. Um, And then, of course, as you as you get to more current times, you also see things like posters promoting the first Million Man March back in like 95 or 96, I think, when that was. And like posters for you know save the planet and all that type of stuff so obviously um posters have been used a lot to promote different types of things and that kind of change people's opinions on various topics yeah i mean i look at it just like kind of the same way i would look at um like i see it sometimes in science fiction shows or i mean just any kind of or books or not just science fiction but other things but sometimes a work of fiction that they try to frame an issue that's going on in the moment in a different light Mm -hmm. so that you look at it and then you learn something from it and I think um, the most effective posters they find a way to really connect to the um, to the viewer yeah they find a way to um, I don't know humanize the people or there's a lot of things it does just depends on which emotion they're kind of trying to go for I was gonna say sometimes they're trying to dehumanize as well well, see, yeah, they're trying to dehumanize another side. Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, I guess in the humanized sense, I guess, um, like one of the most popular posters is that Rosie the Riveter one, mm-hmm. um, where it's just trying to show, you know, it's like a strong woman, and yeah, I mean, that was during like the war. I forget which war that was during, but um, okay, we didn't do that much research, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, but that was like one of the most popular ones. I mean, and then there's the Uncle Sam wants you, I mean, you know, wants you to join, you know, whatever. I actually used that for a design recently because mm-hmm. I mean, that and like you know, the Rosie Risberger one, and there's other ones that have been remixed over the years for a variety of cor- or you know, what uh, was that, Stay Calm and um, no, Carry On. That? Yeah, stay calm. Yeah, I've seen that. You know, I've seen that used to death in with with um, varying results. Um, which, I just ignore I mean, it now because it's. I've become blind to it because it's like, oh, someone else is using that same like same yeah, format in some kind of way that doesn't make it doesn't have the same effect. It's like use it in the original work. I mean, well, 
I wouldn't say that, but so many so so many people have tried to turn that towards their own goals that it just doesn't work anymore. It's just yeah. not effective. It, I mean, it's a good design, but it's just like uh, too many people have ruined it. So I mean, it. Yeah. I don't know. Well, like I just looked, uh, Rosie the River was, was doing uh, World War Two, but I think posters like Rosie the River, for in, instance, try and put a positive face to something. Like, I know in mm. previous episodes, we've talked about people kind of, maybe we haven't, but we've mentioned it in passing. Like, people want to be able to see themselves doing something before they're more yeah. comfortable doing it. Like, so if I can, if I see Michael Jordan playing basketball, I'm probably going to be more comfortable. Or someone that I feel is, like, kind of in my same social group or whatever group, I can kind yeah. of feel more comfortable um, pursuing it because I'm like, well, he did it. I can do it. And I think the Rosie River is a strong example of that, where they obviously wanted women to help with the war effort, so they did a poster of a woman. There's another one. It's not called Rosie River. I think it's called, like, We Can Do It or something like that, but it's the woman kind of flexing, making a that muscle. That is Rosie the River. No, nah, Rosie River is the one by Norman Rockwell. What? It's called uh, We Can Do It or something like that. Oh, and it's the, I think the, people. She's got a red mix, bandana. Mix, yeah, the people mix yeah. them up. Wow. Yeah, because I thought that one was called Rosie. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, it's, it's oh, that same okay. powerful woman image. Okay. Yeah, I see. <laughs> that's yeah. That's completely different. Yep. Huh. I've never seen that one. Before. <laughs> I think everybody thinks the other. One. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. But I think that's one strong example of a way, like a poster, because basically, when you're when someone wants you to support a cause, you want to be able to feel comfortable supporting that cause. Like, yeah, there's other people like me supporting this cause or whatever, or to join a movement, whatever it may be. So these are, I guess, strong mm-hmm. examples of like showing the person, like here's here's what you'll look like when you do this, or whatever. Because I've seen. Uh, similar posters trying to encourage people to to uh, you know join the the army or the navy or whatever. These were you know yeah. during World War One or World War Two where they had like the guy that signed up to join the military and then he's got all the ladies around him, you know, like, yeah. all swooning like oh we're so happy for you Johnny um, <laughs> or whatever they said in the, those times. But it's yeah. the same type of imagery and I've seen when I was looking I looked up. Uh, posters for the million man march the 95 one and you saw some of that same stuff they even made a movie that was kind of like (laughs) that you know that get on the bus movie it was kind of Uh, a long i never watched it (laughs) but from looking at the poster it was kind of the same thing where they want to kind of they want to help you feel comfortable going to the march so they're going to kind of show you like this is what it'll be like if you go this is how it will help you or whatever but you got to condense it down into something small that can fit on a poster so you show that powerful figure of whoever doing whatever yeah. and you're like yeah I can be me yeah you can relate right directly to it um I mean I, I was just thinking about one I saw where it was like uh, I guess it was from England or something like that but it was you know like a, a dad sitting there with his kids and his kids asking him like what did you do in the great war you know mm-hmm. it was like it, it's like the guilt trip and it was like you know but we'll basically depend on which side of the war you were on <laughs> that was a good or a bad thing but it was like they said it's like one of the most effective and it like actually came from the person that created it that actually happened to him like that was a thought he had it's like if I don't do something then what is my son going to say when he asked me what I did or whatever <laughs> um, I designed a poster to make people go fight and kill each other yeah yeah that's what we do so. <laughs> um so, I mean, those are all, like, um, related to, like, going to war and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's probably one of the most, like, well, maybe, I, I don't know if more posters have been made for that. More effective posters have been made for war than other things. But um, that's, like, one of the main reasons why. I mean, because, you know, a government wants somebody that's, they want their people to support. Their, so they're going to do whatever they can, right. as much as they can, to get them, you know, to sway people to. To whatever, you know, whatever cause. I mean, sometimes it may be a good cause. Who knows? I mean, on that level, it, it's, you know, even if it's a good cause on some level, somebody's going to get screwed at some point for it. So, I mean, it's, I don't know. Um, it's interesting. 
Um, but then there were many that were used for social justice. Like one I was thinking about is, um, I mean, it was just people wearing a sign that just said, I am a man. Mm-hmm. I think that was when um, they were... Um, that was during the Civil Rights Movement. I saw those, yeah. too. I thought those were pretty powerful. I mean, from a design perspective, they were very, very simple. And I think that's um, that's not a detraction from them. But most of the ones during the Civil Rights Movement I saw were... Um, I actually posted one on our Instagram. It's a sign that they used to hang outside the NAACP office in New York. It oh, yeah. said, a man was lynched today. Um, and it wasn't like some amazing graphic feat of graphic design but most of the time it's just the words like on a plain simple background were enough to draw a lot of attention to what was going on um yeah because often yeah, times mean, sometimes the, it gets the design the is not across. doesn't have to be that strong because a lot of times it's at least yeah. for in recent years or more recent times when during protests and things like that, like the black lives matter and other, like all the protests against police killings and stuff like that. Most of these posters don't get printed out and hung up anywhere. Yeah. Or, like they're not like hanging up in the post office or nothing like that. Cause you know, some all lives matter people will come tear it down, but they're used in protest. So they're not professional quality, but they still have to condense the message into like a, you know, a small consumable bite that you can see and get yeah. really quick. Well, I mean, and we're in the hashtag era, so some of those things they have to yeah, got to be less than 140 characters. Forms. Yeah, yeah. And while there are, you know, I'm sure there's more complicated posters put up or whatever. A lot of people they consume things quickly on Twitter or something like that. But then that's when you get into memes. Yeah, which is the new propaganda poster. <laughs> yeah, just with varying degrees of pixelation yeah but you always <laughs> got to use uh impact i think that yeah it's it's, it's impact that, that is the font that everyone uses with a black outline white text black yeah outline. or they just do like the white like just writing right above the photo yeah, or whatever it's usually like century <laughs> gothic or something it depends on what you're going for is it conversation or are you trying to say something like meaningful yeah but <laughs> Is it's you got to know when to use which which uh, meme uh, profile? Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I think on the topic of memes, that brings me to like another way that uh, people use, po- like another I guess method that those posters have used over the years is like using stereotypes to either encourage or discourage something. So mm-hmm. a few of the posters I looked at were from probably world war one or world war two i don't know oh those ones about japan or yeah whatever. a lot of them were about japan or like other places yeah, over mad racist. and very racist <laughs> <laughs> like wow. very like extremely like squinty what you would call like asian looking eyes and all kinds of other like real extreme stereotypical things about asian people i'm sure there's yeah. things like that that have been done about black people as well i didn't find that many um but that's another thing where it's oh about black people yeah. well no i mean yeah they're they're a lot well i think the ones <laughs> i'm sure the ones about black bit. people are probably a little more subtle but that it's a different topic for another time in their racism yeah i think so no well some well, of them but well, i'm saying like in current we're like mad racist just on food products to black well people. Yeah, yeah you're right but i'm talking about like in current times i think there's still some of this going on Oh. On, at some level it's not always like blatantly like don't trust the japanese but stuff like that does happen still but it's more by just using stereotypical people in posters and less by you know, saying don't trust you know don't trust black people or whatever oh yeah it's a little more like uh i guess i can't think of the word for it but they try to be subtle yeah. about it but i saw a lot of posters like that where it's just straight up let's play on the stereotype that you can't trust these people and yeah i think it again you're you're kind of making a common enemy like where the rosie the river was making a common like goal for people to seek towards um mm-hmm. these anti-japanese anti-black people anti whoever posters were making uh a common enemy like look all those people like that let's hate them because there are also ones like that against like the nazis and stuff like that and then yeah. The interesting thing, because I'd never seen these, was I saw one, I guess it's from China from the 50s, where 
they showed like a stereotypical typical American killing them and I thought that was interesting yeah. to see that it happens on both sides yeah yeah it's interesting how that goes I remember looking at a bunch of uh, Cuban like propaganda stuff I mean it wasn't necessarily all anti-American or whatever but I mean some of it may have been but um, and they and, I mean side note they had like really good design mm. Um, but <laughs> that's the problem. That's a problem. Some of these, um, as a designer, sometimes you'll see a design and be like, wow, that's really good. And then, and then it clicks like, oh wait, that's for the Nazis. <laughs> but it's so good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that was good. I need to just back away. From- <laughs> <laughs> Like I well, really yeah. like this I mean, logo they have. Yeah. Like the, the... <laughs> <laughs> you start using it on something. Well, I, I mean, that's a case of branding be, being effective. I mean, even now in movies or Star Wars or anything like that, where they want to depict an evil empire, it's that same kind of branding like playbook that you know, that branding palette that the that, that like from mm. the Nazis. Which I mean, it, it's effective, and you know, it, it has a it gives you a certain feel. So I mean, no, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I'm, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's interesting how that plays a part, like just in people's perception of whatever issue is going on at the moment. And because uh, what is interesting now is some of those posters. I wonder if some of those things like that, especially ones that are like mad racist, if that would be effective now um, in the age of, you know, information. Age of information and disinformation. Yeah. AKA fake news. Um, I think some of them would can still be effective um, because you, if you think about it, there's a lot of people that seriously believe that like Trayvon Martin or whatever was a, a gangster thug or whatever like all these people that got killed should have died because whatever they were criminals or whatever so not necessarily that this was done by posters or whatever or through graphic design but you know there are people who can be swayed will the willfully in- yeah, yeah, ignorant yeah. yeah well yeah those will always exist but I mean like at that time like with those posters and everything you know, you didn't have, you didn't know these people. You weren't going to run into these people. So you had no way of being like, oh, let me go find out about Japanese real quick. Yeah, you know? let me ask this <laughs> you could, you Japanese guy that. I work with, like, is he trying to spy on us for the Nazis or whatever? Yeah, it's like way, I mean, it was way too easy to, you know, I mean, and that's the same reason why, you know, this rampant racism now and why um, a Cheeto is president and all that kind of stuff because there are people that can dissociate their dissociate themselves from other yeah. people because they're not around them so it's easy for them to just like eh, I don't know those people yeah. anyway I just believe whatever they're saying about it or whatever and that's what I'm going to go with yep but um and I think that's why I mean if you think about the the poster I was talking about before, that I am a man thing, that's exactly what that was trying to like trigger in people. It's like, no, you need to see me right. as a person. Like, you can't just you know brush me across or whatever. Um, was, and it, I mean, it's, I was going to oh, say, go was kind of changing the topic a little bit. Um, some of the other posters I came about were come come across were for like the uh, Black Panther Party. Um, that was mm-hmm. obviously after slavery, but from what I was reading, uh, the guy that made a lot of them, his name was Emery Douglas. Emery Douglas. Um, he made a lot of them with, they very, had very few words on them or like it was mostly like a an image of something. Um, and it might say Black Panther on it somewhere, but it was because a lot of their people just didn't know how to read. And so they had to get their message out mm-hmm. about the Black Panthers or whatever. But they didn't have they couldn't put like a bunch of words and stuff on there so they just did designs to get people's attention so they would know what was going on or would you know carry, can carry the message to the people without you know while considering their limitations yeah you know literacy wise that's interesting that's interesting i mean because that speaks to like good design like if you know can it work can your poster work without yeah. words um or I mean, yeah, can it work without words? You people get in. Those are I think the most effective ones. And then yeah, they, you don't need to mm-hmm. sell it, and it makes it 
you know, not just for people that can't read, but for, for people that may not. I mean, just the casual. Well, viewer. that's if they see it and they get it, then it's like, oh, yeah, that's you know? the other <laughs> thing is like I should. For a lot of these, at least, I'm sure like they were probably hung somewhere where people are passing by frequently, and not everyone's gonna have time to stop and look. So like, another strong design is like yeah. the the Che Guevara or however you say his name. Um, yeah. that one, there's no words on it, but it's just the guy looking all like hopeful or whatever, <laughs> and it's enough to yeah. get your attention. Like it's an image that people can be drawn to, and I think that's that. Like I like you said that those are the most post powerful posters because. The person doesn't have to stop and figure it out. Um, I looked yeah. at... They can see themselves in it. Yeah, I looked yeah. at one... Because another one is like, there's this poster of Huey Newton, which, again, Black Panthers. Um, and he's just sitting there in a chair with a, a, a gun and a spear. And it just communicates yeah. power. But... Um, yeah. One poster I saw was... Um, it's called Liberators. We'll link to it in our show notes or something like that. But it's uh, by a Nazi group, I guess, in the 50s or 40s or something. But it's basically depicting America as, you know, what America is. Uh, money-grabbing, racist, over-sexualized, and all-empowering. And... Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <Damn. laughs> but it, it it it's a it's like a big monster of America, and it's got on a Ku Klux Klan hood. It's got a money bag in one hand. It's got a bunch of black people in jail. Um, it's it's got a bomb on one foot. Like a lot of it is kind of accurate, and it's got a, a a lynch a lynching rope on one of its hands too. So yeah, it's one of those posters crazy. where, like, just looking at it. It's not one of those ones I would just look at and get the message immediately. Well, I might, but it's one of those where you would want to stop and look and like, oh, okay, I see what they're trying to say here. Um, yeah. So I thought it was pretty interesting. It's just crazy because that came from Nazis, yeah. It's, I thought it was pretty good because like, it's it's not inaccurate, especially at the time when it was made. No. It's, it's very not inaccurate. So. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. I'm not gonna say that I like it. It's but yeah because. Uh, but it's just it's well, sad it's just but interesting true, I'll to say. me, like that coming from a Nazi group, and I mean, I mean, you know, considering yeah. what they did, and then what you know, I mean, of course they were trying to paint themselves in a certain light. It's like they were hiding that, but yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> Neither <laughs> y'all were wrong. <laughs> Neither was completely yeah. wrong about like you know the other. Yeah, I, yeah, that's interesting. Though I mean it. Well, uh, well, see, but see, they have this. Yeah, I don't know, because then they have like the Star of David. Like, uh, see, yeah, they. I don't know. It's interesting. I, I'll just say yeah. that it's interesting. <laughs> and, um, have what? Are, what? Talk, um, I know we we're talking about like recent, like, uh, you know, social justice posters. Um. Right now, actually today, <laughs> I didn't realize it, but today I'm wearing a, one of those uh, I stand with Standing Rock mm-hmm. um, shirts. Um, but uh, which part of the reason I got it, I mean, because I like, I mean, I like what they stand for and everything, and I wanted to help out in some kind of way. And then I saw the shirt and was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's a nice shirt. <laughs> I like the design of it. So, I mean, it, which is interesting to me, like how that plays a role in you in. I wonder if sometimes that comes first. Somebody likes something and be, and that gets them in the door and they're like, well, I like this, so maybe I'll get on board with whatever yeah. else is going well, on. Well, I'll say, like, so years ago, I don't know, it was probably like eight years ago, probably more, I saw somebody and they had a shirt that said, Save Darfur. And I was, I thought it looked cool. It was just a mm-hmm. really simple shirt. The font looks kind of cool. So I was like, oh, I like that shirt. So I went and Googled. I found out about all the genocide or whatever that was happening over there. I actually bought a shirt. But the design is what pulled me into it more than anything else. And I think that's what mm. kind of matters today as well. Um, I saw this other shirt. It wasn't really for social a social issue, but it was, uh, you know, those nutrition facts labels. Mm-hmm. It was one of those, but it was like uh, black nutrition facts. So it said, like, you know. Oh, yeah, I've seen I that. thought it was pretty cool. 
I didn't buy it because I just kept forgetting and I'm broke. But um, again, I think the design is probably going to do like has to do like 90 percent of the work. Yeah. And I, I mean, part of me, I think I'm OK with that. I know there's people that would be like, oh, you just now jumping on to this bandwagon or whatever. But if somebody's on the bandwagon, I mean, if somebody even if they just now are finding out, that's good, though. That's the yeah. goal, right? You want them to be on board. So, I mean, even if they're new to it and the thing that pulled them in was the design, that's fine. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like all the people buying Bob Marley shirts first time they smoke, they smoke weed or something like that. It's like suddenly, oh, wow, suddenly you're a Bob Marley fan. All right. Uh, but, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's interesting how that, how that works and if people should be offended by it or mm. what. I mean, like. As long as you make sure the thing is going like for this shirt, I mean, I made I did my research and was trying to make sure. Okay, I don't want to just buy this from some random person that just put it up on Zazzle or something like that. To yeah, sell, you know, <laughs> that's not actually for a cause. Because um, I mean, I know I've designed shirts. We have a couple in our shop, uh, AlienMuffin.Threadless.com. Um, that um, that I designed it. Some of them have. You know, thing like one of them is like says like I matter or something like that. But I come up with the design because it's something on my mind, and I something I was thinking about at the time, and I wanted to design something around it. Um, just it looked cool, so I would want to wear and everything, and you know, just go from there. Um, and I've I've had ideas since then about certain things that go around in the world, and it's like, oh, that looked like a cool thing, or I can design this. But the thing I try to avoid is I don't want to make something that is going to um, I, I guess I don't want to make money off of somebody's like uh, like a I don't know it's like me making like a Trayvon shirt and then like selling it and pocketing in all the money like yeah that's messed up that's not yeah I wouldn't do that <laughs> you know I mean if you're going to do something you like have it go to the right channels and all that kind of stuff or whatever but I, I kind of just like avoid doing that anyway because I know somebody's already probably on that that's closer to the thing and I don't want to well sometimes I feel bad because I'll wanna... make like a design that's kind of lame like I remember, mm-hmm. I think they they had like some hands up, don't shoot shirts that like basketball players were wearing, mm-hmm. and they were whack. And I'm like, eh. oh, those ones in like comic sans. Yeah, or... yeah, it was like <laughs> that's not an article about that. <laughs> come on, y'all could have done something better. I mean, it's fine. I'm glad that the message is out there, but I wish it was designed better because it might have gone farther. Yeah, I mean it's. Like I, I have, well, I'll tell you about that later. But I have an idea for a shirt that we can make pretty easily. Just simple, but make it clean. But anyway, I'll tell you about that later. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but yeah, that that's what makes it. That's what helps a design stand or a message mm-hmm. stand if it's done yeah. well. Um, I mean, you got the message out there, but did they wear that shirt again? Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's a cool shirt, you'll keep on wearing yeah. it. I mean, just like you know, people wear shirt for star wars or anything else they like they'll keep wearing it if it if it looks cool yeah not just because it has some words on it or whatever i mean i know i just uh, i mean i painted a picture called i can't breathe but it wasn't like a direct you know it was inspired by that but i didn't have my own re- you can check that on anthonyarch.com um this guy yeah. <laughs> all you do is plug hey well but, i think again yeah. it we we've kind of said it several times. So the design matters. The design is probably the most important, one of the most important things, um, when you're doing these types of things, trying to you know promote a message or whatever. Um, and I think mm-hmm. also like we talked about the use of stereotypes matters, but the use of sort of like icons. Because I saw a poster for the whole Occupy Wall Street movement, and mm-hmm. it used kind of an image of. I'm trying to remember the name of that movie, but it was a movie where this guy he's wearing a mask and he runs around and just starts all kind of anarchy all over the place. Uh, he's like overthrowing the government. Oh, V for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's that guy, and like you don't have to say much more because the poster all it says is "Occupy" and it's got like that guy's face kind of thing on there. Yeah, and it's enough. Like that's easy to communicate. Like so, that's yeah. what I would say is probably the most important is make sure your message is something succinct yeah because i mean i've seen like i mean like i was thinking about it like people were like 
people that don't understand Black Lives Matter, the you know the uninitiated. Um, which, which okay, I admit at the first when it first started coming out, I was kind of like, well, and that's like, hey, so it's got to be a different way to word that so it doesn't come off like that. But I understood like, I understood why it needed to be worded mm-hmm. like that. Because I mean, people are saying like, well, what it really means is Black Lives Matter too, or something like that. But that's not a good hashtag, no. <laughs> and it's not succinct. It, you know, so you know, you have to live with yeah. it. I mean, I mean, and if it really offends people, I mean, I don't know, get over it. But like, it's not that. Um, there's certain things work for certain reasons, mm. and I mean, and that's one of them. I mean, like even like with ha- like when we're talking about hashtags and stuff like that. I mean, your message needs to be, you know, needs to fit in the. Um, you know, you, you quickly hashtag the kill quickly typed out, or otherwise it looks crazy. Um, just like I mean, like no deep dapple, you know. It it's quick and easy. It's not like they typed out no Dakota Access Pipeline, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you have to find a way to make it simple. I mean, in a lot of I mean, a lot of companies, that's one of the first things they think of when they have a new product or something like that. It's like, okay, how can I make this a hashtag? Because they wanted to go viral or you know whatever, or at least want people to talk about it and not have to think too hard about what the hashtag is going to be. So, <laughs> which is you know, it's I think it's like the same approach with like the civil rights posters, like the "I am a man" one. I mean, that would make a good hashtag, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just quick and easy, quick to the point. You can read it when you're walking by or driving by really quick or something like that. I mean, and uh, I think that's what's important in mean, in a movement. I mean, even once you get past the design. Phase, you want to the success of a movement is um, one of the most important things is that it can be explained quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like an ev- elevator pitch. You know, you need to be able to say it quickly and get to the point, and not have to like, well, this move and then this part over here. I mean, I would give an example of a movement that didn't work because of bad branding, but Don't I remember. can't remember <laughs> it because of bad yeah. branding. <laughs> so. So I, I don't know. I'm sure that's one. If I sat down and really thought about it, I could come up with something. But yeah, it just doesn't work because uh, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> and you want it to stick with people. Yeah. And you can use that same logic when you're having a car wash or a yard sale. Um, don't put it on a lime green board <laughs> and use a, a, a you know, a basic big pen to write the you know, on there even if you scribble but you can't read that you need a marker you know <laughs> make it clean so people can read it otherwise it just looks like you're holding up a big uh bright yellow piece of paper for no reason so yep that that's neither here nor there <laughs> well i think all in all the i think posters were probably like any a Given today, like the way people interact and stuff like that, posters are obviously not as effective as they would have been back in the day. Because now, your best bet, if you're designing stuff like this, you probably don't need to print it out at all. Because <laughs> it's probably, you need, yeah. it's going to end up, like some of the most powerful stuff I've seen has ended up as it's something that people are reposting on Facebook, like putting on Tumblr, putting on their Instagram, that type of stuff. Like one of the one thing um, when you were talking, I thought about like that. It's that image of it's a a woman and she's wearing like the Muslim thing, but it's got the flag in the background. Oh yeah, that's yeah. recent. Yeah, and I thought that I one was that. Yeah, pretty yeah. powerful and very good because it was really simple. But it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, she's got the hijab or whatever it's called on. Sorry to yeah. anybody that knows the right term. I don't know. I'm not. I think that's right. But anyway, I thought that was really a really hey. powerful thing. <laughs> we didn't, <laughs> and of course, it could be printed. But I guess to, nowadays you gotta account for the, all the different forms of media that your thing could end up on. Yeah. So, well, it may not be. It may. It may. The, nowadays, I think it's. I mean, it may be a poster, but I don't know where people put up posters yeah. anymore. But um, most likely, I mean, well, there's posters up, but they're usually like corporate stuff movie posters but like as far as like a poster you can just put up yourself you don't see that because they ripped that stuff down asap um but t-shirts i think that's the new poster 
because back in the day they couldn't easily print print t-shirts like that but now you can easily do that and i mean it's effective i mean you know people wear it and it's clothes and it's a and it's Mm -hmm. and it's a poster so (laughs) so it's like a the perfect you know perfect item so i mean i think that you know it'll be printed in that sense and you know then it needs to work on the internet well so yeah, I mean, come to think of it, I've actually bought several T-shirts just because of, you know, they had some political or social statement that I really believed in, I thought was cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah, T-shirts and memes and stuff like yeah. that are kind of the new poster. So you got to make a message that fits in those types of medium <clears throat> well. And I think that's the biggest part yeah. of it is that it's got to work in multiple formats. Yeah. I think the main problem nowadays with, um, I mean, with, you know, propaganda or whatever, (laughs) new propaganda posters is that it's so easy for misinformation to be put out there. Well, every, it's so easy for everyone to put their own version of whatever t-shirt or poster out or meme or whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever their truth is, their personal truth. Yeah. And no, but in very few, I mean, a lot of people don't check the mm-hmm. sources or whatever they I mean because I, I remember seeing something I, it was like some picture of a guy like it's like a wedding picture and he was standing there kissing the girl and there was like all these guys standing behind him like with their arms like linked around his their each other's arms or something it is that sounds really weird to describe it it looked it was a weird looking picture but apparently that's like some kind of fraternity whatever I'm not in a fraternity so I don't know but apparently that's a thing. But then people are under the picture saying like, this guy couldn't walk, and so they all held him up or <laughs> something like that. And everybody was going in like, no, it's not. It, but it's like so easy for something like that. You know, what's that saying? Like the truth. I mean, a lie will travel around the world twice before the truth gets out of bed or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's so easy to shit. You know, share something and be like, oh, okay, not nah, that looks right. Oh, that that makes sense. Oh, I agree with that. You know. Let me just share that real quick or whatever. Yeah. So, and it, and it, you know, before anybody can be like, wait, what? Did what you, you see that about? one? Yeah. It was, I don't know, maybe a year ago, possibly longer, where it was like some, it was like a white couple taking wedding pictures and then like a whole bunch of like black people, inner city, urban youth in the background, uh, just standing there. And it was like, I think on Facebook or somewhere I saw it, it was people were like, apparently like, the 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 story was that the husband or the wife one of them had texted somebody like hey our wedding's at this date and time and and they had accidentally sent it to the wrong number and then all these black people showed up at the wedding but that's obviously that wasn't the story the oh. real story but it was just like it took off on facebook as like a thing oh no i don't think i saw that <laughs> oh my god see people people just like a good story and they'll believe yeah. whatever the story's more interesting you know. than the truth yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and I think that happens a lot of times. But I mean, you know, I know we're talking about propaganda and stuff. I mean, but it is propaganda. But but in, in this case, I guess it's not even like somebody with some kind of ill like uh, intent or like I don't know. They don't, they don't even have a goal. They're just trying to. It's like who came up with that story first? It's just funny, you know. Somebody like, just wants to be internet person? famous. That, I guess that must be what it is because it's like, where did you come up with that? Why do you think that's what that is happened? Like, where did you find yeah. this photo? Like, where did the I don't because you never know how these things where they start. But I think some of it is just like, place. here's a photo, let's put a story to it. Like, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do that, I mean, I've heard people you know add a caption or something like that just to be funny, but it's like, I don't know, it's like. Usually somebody comes in with a long paragraph about what happened, and it's like that is not where did you just yeah. make that up? Like, wh- how? I don't know. That's it, that's kind of weird to me. Like, how do you have? But that I'll say time? like I'm, with the the again with the ease of how easy it is to create content or you know promote whatever your agenda is, it makes it. I think it, it kind of makes it even more important to make sure whatever you're doing, if you're trying to do this, that you have a mm-hmm. strong design and something that'll stand out and get people's attention because they're like, it's flooded. And 
um, this is probably something we could talk about maybe in some other episode, but it's easy, especially now with, you know, with social media and social networks and all that type of stuff, it's easy to get in a place where you can easily, like you were talking about earlier, you can easily ignore anything that doesn't agree with what you want to talk, what you want to see. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can mute all yeah. the people that are talking about Dakota Access Pipeline if I don't care about that. I can easily mute them on Facebook, on Twitter, or whatever. <clears throat> so I don't have to see that. Yeah. So it can become tough to break through, like, those echo chambers that people put themselves in and actually be seen. Yeah. Partly. Yeah. I mean, that that's true, and I still block people for <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, but if you think about it, like back I mean, in the I don't day, know. I mean, there were only like uh, so many mm. sources that would be even putting out this type yeah. of stuff. Um, I mean, because yeah. there were, you know, there's large groups of disenfranchised people who just may not even have the ability to put out this type of stuff. You also had large groups of people who just didn't, yeah. couldn't even digest this type of stuff because they couldn't read or couldn't get the education to understand yeah. or read. So. It was far more simple to get your message out to a lot of people. Um, and that's probably why you don't see that much, a whole lot of uh, uh, civil rights posters from like that civil rights area era in the 50s and 60s, I guess, because a large portion of the population may not even have the ability to read. So it was a lot of word of mouth and that type of stuff. And now... Or didn't have the resources yeah. to reproduce it. or Yeah, so that's like why that. like yeah. the whole churches and like Martin Luther King as a pastor made a whole lot of sense versus like anything else. Yeah. But um, now with, and I, I think also they were trying to avoid some, in some cases they may have been trying to avoid attention in some ways until right. they were yeah. ready to do. Yeah, something. that makes sense. So. But I'll say like now with every, like everybody has access to do whatever they want within, you know, within some reason it makes it, yeah harder to not only harder to figure out what the truth is but also harder as someone who's trying to share your version of the truth or your your uh, passion it's kind of harder to get it out there and get people to listen that may not necessarily agree with you because that's that's the whole point of some of these at least not all of them are trying to aimed at people that don't agree but a lot of this like um i looked at a lot of uh climate change and environmental posters and encouraging people like to use solar panels or to you know stop killing polar bears or whatever um a lot of those mm -hmm. at least nowadays it's going to be tough to even get people to even consider looking at them if they don't agree because yeah i mean and that's when you come in i mean that's where you have people like i guess peter or something like that where they you know I haven't I honestly I haven't seen anything from them in a long time, but I know it used to be the the thing to do. It's like, oh, okay, let me go pose nude yeah. with Peter or something like that. And then you know, it gets apparently it pulls people around or something like that. I don't know. I don't know anybody that really likes Peter though. But um yeah, I don't know. I mean it they people try to find a hook and sometimes that hook is like I don't know, it's weak or well, not. It's connected. like clickbait. Because like, like that that whole posing nude thing, like Yeah, exactly. I I'm not for like hurting animals, but uh, I'm probably not gonna. <laughs> or it depends on who it is. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you are. I'm not it. willing to do it, but I'm saying, <laughs> depending on who it is, like the reason why they were doing it, like if it's not some woman that people think is attractive, or a guy that men think or women think are is attractive, then like, what's the point? Didn't they? All like it, it was just um, like that was old school clickbait yeah no yeah i mean they still do that now i mean in commercials and everything else but honestly it's like once you get people in like yeah. are they going to stay it's like oh okay well i can put a nudes <laughs> and <Thanks>. got that <laughs> bye <laughs> like why you know that's there's no yeah that doesn't it's not a i don't feel like it's effective because you're not really hitting them with the hard information <laughs> it's like they got what yeah. they wanted and they walked away that's it but i mean uh, it, it's uh i guess on some level it's just that whole like brand recognition thing where you just show them if you get enough people looking you can hopefully make some sort of difference yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's the logic behind it, but I mean, <laughs> does it work? I don't know. I, um, I I don't. I still don't be I don't, ethically I don't treating animals at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, just, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't say. I mean, I don't know how they quantify it. Well, besides like the Dakota Access Pipeline and some of the others, have are there any other like? Uh, Things that things like where about. you got pulled in <laughs> by something you saw design wise. Um. Well, I mean, I didn't. I mean, that wasn't the only reason why I got pulled I'm in. I'm saying, like, sure. has there any been anything where um, it was literally just like mainly the design? Because obviously, the design is kind of for me in the like the ones that have impacted me. I think the design was the first step, and then I read about it and I was like, oh yeah, this is a good cause. I should care about yeah. this. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't. I don't think I bought anything with it on him or whatever. But I remember the che, seeing the Che Guevara stuff. I mean, that was like really popular at one point, and I remember seeing it and think it was looked cool and everything. Um, I mean, I didn't like. I didn't ever bought anything or whatever. I'm trying to think if there was something else. Um, um, I can't think of anything at the moment that I really felt like. passionate about it and then I bought a shirt for it. I can't think of anything. I mean I have a bunch of car shirts but um well, I'll say I like know. the whole uh when I first started hearing about Obama. Um oh, I, I have an Obama have shirt. It's not like one from like the direct from Obama thing. It's somebody else made a shirt with mm-hmm. Obama stuff on it. But I like the design. But yeah. when I first heard about like the fact that Obama was running and all that type of stuff. I wasn't like super gassed because, you know, it's hard to have positive expectations like, nah. for any politician. <laughs> um, not that I've been like, oh, I've been here for years and seen so many politicians, but like just, it, you just don't assume anything good. But um, believe it. I really liked yeah. like the whole hope thing he had going on and the design, the logo. It was way, 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 way better than McCain's stuff. Everybody, else. yeah, yeah, like we that talked was, about in episode, yeah, episode two, episode I two think. or three. But yeah, I think oh, that okay. was a, a situation where the design was good, and the the image, like the the message it was sending, the message of hope. I thought that was a po- very positive message, and it wasn't yeah. just like something generic. That I forget what McCain's slogan was, but his logo was whack, and so I think. That's again yeah. where it comes back to the design pulled me. The design got my attention, but I was also interested because it's like, hey, there's a black man. <laughs> like, hey, mama, look at that black man. So that yeah. that was enough to get my attention um, <laughs> and for me to at least pay attention. Not that I would have. Yeah. Because again, like we could talk about like Ben Carson. His designs weren't terrible, but we don't have to. But we have his to. designs weren't terrible. Just, just he wasn't okay. that great of a person. So I think. <laughs> There's a combination you have to put together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or Herman yeah, there's Cain. been several that have come through <laughs> and like they didn't have the right mixture. But I think if you have the good mixture, it can work. You trying to say that because Obama's half white? Yeah. <laughs> because he's okay. uh, a communist, <laughs> that's why. Because <laughs> he's a Muslim? Muslim communist. That's what yep. you said. Um but I'm trying to think of what, <laughs> if there's anything else that I really kind of bought into any sort of movement. Um, I can't. I mean, there's plenty of things I've gotten, but none of them were like for like I would say it was like a social justice movement that I bought into. It was like more so like, oh yeah, I agree that lowered cars look cool. I you know <laughs> I like Star Wars. You know, yeah, <laughs> and stuff like that. Nothing that like was like really like. Me I mean, it. I'm not I'm not a person that walks around trying to make political statements all the time. So, um, well, that's the other thing. Uh, like, I like to be more subtle in some of the. Yeah. Stuff. I mean, well, I bought my own shirt uh, that you can get at uh, alienmuffin.threatless.com. Um, but uh, well, that's something like with the shirts that we've designed because the shirt we designed, one of the first shirts we worked together on. It's not even on our site. It's the one with the the roots. Is that? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we designed a shirt yeah. a long time ago. If you look on our Instagram, I think there's a picture of it. Um, it's a fist with some roots on it or something. But anyway, like when I started getting into like you may need a revive. Yeah. That. So we'll have it on our shop soon. Yeah. But um, 
<laughs> That's when I was like, I should start. I, I'll say it felt it feels good to wear a shirt that actually has some meaning behind it and has something behind yeah. it. Yeah. Um, where people might ask, hey, what, what does that mean? What is what is that? And then you can have an opportunity to kind of tell them, like, hey, you know, Black Lives Matter or whatever, you know, whatever your thing is that you're trying to tell people about. Um, uh, alien muffin dot threat list. <laughs> so uh, I think that's great, but um, that only was like, that was only something I could do like part of the time because. I can't wear a shirt like that to work because I have a real like I have a, a a blue collar job or not a blue collar a white collar job I guess you'd say where I can't wear a t-shirt to work I have to have have a shirt with a collar <laughs> so you could wear it under your t-shirt <laughs> yeah like so I have a one time of get Superman that okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ripping over your shirt all day at work but yeah uh, I think that's something i don't even know what the point of this was but yeah like some of the stuff i would probably do like in terms of wearing like shirts with uh, social causes on them and stuff like that a lot of times i haven't really gotten into them or didn't buy the shirt or whatever because i was like what am i gonna wear this like the weekend is two maybe three days at the most and like i'm not i have a lot of shirts I don't need another shirt that I'm not going to wear that often. Yeah, I have a lot of t-shirts. I mean, yeah, I mean, because that's my same issue. I need to get rid of something, but yeah, it, I can't buy a t-shirt for every movement or something like that. I mean, and I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not one that walks around trying to have political or social conversations with people or conversations with people in general. <laughs> yeah. So my shirts are either more subtle or they're just, you know, kind of like, oh, okay, I agree. Star Wars is cool. All right. <laughs> but I mean, I don't mind some. I mean, sometimes I wear other stuff. But I mean, I don't know. I'm not like trying to walk around having conversations with strangers about my shirt. Not really. No. But um, no, because you'll see people like. Uh, I think that's become a trend now. Like American Eagle makes a lot of shirts like that, where they're kind of like the conversation starter shirts. Where it was oh, like great. I saw some guy like that Starbucks thing. I don't know what that is, but I saw a shirt some guy had on, and it said like famous rapper. It's like a Christmas themed t shirt, but it's a famous rapper. Uh, like stuff like that where it's a joke and it's like to get someone's attention, to laugh, and then maybe they'll talk to you, that type of thing. And I get it, but with the in a climate where there's a lot of those shirts, then when you have a shirt that actually means something, you can probably end up getting overlooked. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Unless it's something like really popular and people know about. But yeah, yeah I mean it's kinda it and then you run into the people that have like a whole paragraph on their shirt about whatever movement they care about and I'm like dude I'm not reading your shirt your shirt one because I ain't got time for that and two because you're gonna think I'm staring at your boobs which I might be I might be (laughs) Uh, happy anniversary by the way well thank you so unrelated unrelated but yeah (laughs) Um. Yeah. Well, um, we'd also like to say um, thanks to everybody that uh, checked out our last episode. Um, it's one of our more successful episodes. We don't know what we did right, but we hope to do it again. Yep. Thanks for <laughs> listening. Yeah. Um. And hopefully you enjoy this next episode. Um. But remember to. Follow us on the um, on the internet. We're Alien Muffin at everything, and AlienMuffin.com. And if you're wondering <laughs> what our shop is, it's AlienMuffin.Threadless.com. Or you can just go to AlienMuffin.com, and there's a link to the shop there where you can check out some of our yeah. T-shirts. And some of them are related to social justice, and some of them are just T-shirts with an interesting thing on them that can you can wear, and people will start talking to you and saying, "Hey, what's that on their shirt? Where'd you get that from?" Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Check out our previous episodes. um, And enjoy the rest of the month.